Jimmy, 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 you liar! Gas liar! Everybody hates Chelsea, but she's not as crazy as you think. Seriously? Okay, I did a whole hour long breakdown on what trash Jimmy is. He's a liar, 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 pants on fire. Literally, this man drives me crazy. And he's a king in double talk. I say this, but I do this. I say this and I do this. So everyone thinks that Chelsea is needy and crazy and insecure. And she is insecure and does need therapy. And she is actually in therapy now. But Jimmy, Jimmy, you are a classic example of a man that makes a woman look crazy because you lie and you lie and you lie to her face and your actions don't match and she doesn't understand what you're doing, but I know what you're doing. So again, I did a whole video on, you know, an hour long video on this clown. And I do hold Chelsea accountable. I do. She has a lot of healing to do. She should not be dating. She needs to date herself, love herself, all the things, okay? But Jimmy and the editors of that show made her look way crazier than she is. And I went scene by scene how this man just lied, lie, 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 lie. And then she's like, I'm feeling insecure and not really safe in this relationship. And he's like, well, you hurt my feelings. You hurt my feelings. How could you say that? Any woman who has ever dated a narcissist or just a gaslighting abuser, not just, any, uh, any man who does this, we know, we know. And the most extreme example of this would be called reactive abuse. I hate that term, but basically what it is, and we saw this like on film with Gabby Petito or whatever her name is, the white woman who died in the van, her crazy ex, the police were like, wow, that was crazy. And he was calm, cool, and collective. And they're like, yeah, I mean, we should arrest her. But we'll give him the van. He was crazy because the man says this and does this. But says this with so much conviction. But it, ugh. So I, I'm not calling Jimmy an abuser by no means. He's just like me, a man. He is like so many men out there. All the men on Tinder who say no drama. That's Jimmy. And I'm going to break down their last scene so you can see just how much this man confuses her. The problem is that her intuition, which is why she keeps wanting to barf every time she's like a big moment with him. He makes her nervous. He drives her crazy. She literally said that. Now, some of that is her own stuff, but a lot of it, her not understanding why he's saying this, but doing that. And then looking right at the camera, telling us he doesn't love her. And telling her to her face, I love you with all my heart. You're my person. I just hate how you look, how you're clingy. I don't want to fork you. I literally called you the wrong name. I'm going to go talk to the girl I really wanted. I'm going to go check out her, pr her Instagram. But I love you. It hurts my feelings that you think I don't love you. This is the most classic example, okay? Now again, I have, have been on a reality TV show for National Geographic that had no drama whatsoever. It was literally just about the brain and its survival mechanism, okay? And even in that show, they edited it down to make the guy who everyone on set hated, all the crew hated, I hated. He was the worst. He looked like the hero. And the guy who was like a pretty cool guy, every, all my friends watched the show, they were like, I don't like that guy. So I know, editing, editing, editing. But I don't like the, the way they edited her but even still, Jimmy looks awful to me. And if you hate Chelsea, either A, you don't understand men yet, or B, it makes you feel good about yourself to judge her and think that could never be you. But if you've never dated a man like that, or like I used to do is when I saw Chelsea's, I judged her and hated her because she reminded me of myself. Are you on the Chelsea spectrum? Is that why you're giving her so much crap? Again, I'm not a fan of Chelsea. She rigged the game. She broke the rules by saying she looked like Megan Fox. We know that. But Jimmy is the real villain here. And I'm going to show you in this scene that he is just doing this all the time. A an hour video wasn't enough to dedicate to Jimmy. So right before this big fight that ended their engagement, they're out playing 
Rollin' Ride Roller Coaster. Playing water guns. Pew, pew, pew. He got her a bear or some stupid stuffed animal. She's like, oh my God, babe. They had the best time ever. Right before this. And then, like, they go to dinner. And she was like, hey, this is our last con our last date before the wedding. He's like, oh, is it? He's plotting. He's like, crap, I guess this is when I have to tell her I don't want to be with her. So he starts off this whole thing. And again, I don't want to repeat myself from the last video. But he starts off this whole thing being like, I love you so much. I have no doubt in my mind that you, Chelsea, are my person. But I just need to know where are you at? Hmm? Huh? What, what are you thinking? And so she's like, now part of this, for unhealed people, not like you're ever healed. People haven't really done the work. And if you come from a very insecure home, if you're a survivor of any kind of essay or abuse or narcissism, or blah, 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 blah. What, what a lot of us grow up thinking is that relationships are about the upper hand. Men think like this all the time because of patriarchy, plus any unhealed trauma. But I have noticed this in my relationship, anytime there's conflict, I feel very emboldened when he's wrong. And when I'm wrong, I am terrified he's going to leave me, even though I have no reason to think that. That is just a trauma response. And so I constantly want to make sure that I'm never in that position. So, so part of my own healing, even in a very healthy relationship, is to keep my trauma responses in check so that I don't feel like I have to, that, that, so I don't get off on feeling like I have more power at any point in time or less power. Cause that's not about him, that's about me. Because he doesn't, he, he doesn't even bring power into our love. He's never doing anything to get the upper hand. Jimmy, always the upper hand. And her, when she's feeling insecure, you can see her grapple with this, like who has the power now? These two people do not need to be dating anyone. But this man is a manipulative, gaslighting, entitled king baby, southern man on top of all that. Southern white man, tall, like frat boy. Sorry, I grew up with them. She absolutely plays game and has her own tricks and doesn't associate love with eye to eye. It's more about power and like, do you, and, and validation. It's not about love. It's about validation and ego. She doesn't love herself really much, if at all. So she doesn't even know what it feels like to be loved. So all this crap he says all the time, she thinks that's love, but then his, his actions don't match someone who loves her and she can't figure this out. So she does this speech here. She's thinking, okay, he's fully in. He just said, I'm his person. He loves me more than anyone, blah, 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 blah. all the crap he always said. I guess he's bought in. They had this great day together. You know, he said he forgave her for not respecting his boundaries of being upset that he texts and calls and talks to the friend of his that he used to fork. How dare her be upset about that? His boundaries, much, much like Jonah, Jonah Hill had boundaries about what his girlfriend could wear. Weaponized therapy talk. She's like, you know, we have fun together. I know that we can handle conflict. No, you can't. No, you can't. This man walks out every time and you have to beg him to stay. But I, I see your life with you. I see you being an amazing husband. What is giving you that impression? You're not seeing the truth. You're seeing what you want to see. I see you being an amazing dad. Did you meet his dad? That's another video. His dad's a king baby. Who? Complained about his wife. She's a hoarder. She's a whore. A pack rat. Didn't have anything nice to say about her at all. And she's all wiping stuff off of his beard. So, you know, if you just look at his dad, you might wonder, hmm, is that how he's going to parent? And then he, like, all he's uh, just uh, so immature and can't have conflict. So he's not going to be back the dad. Anyway. And she's all like, and the other day, that fight we had, I was just having an off day. While she's saying all this, look at this face. Look at this face. He's like, I... I'm so going to destroy her because she's not Megan Fox. But after all those hard talk and her apologizing for saying she didn't feel loved and bringing up the girl who's texting him all the time, she was starting to feel secure and confident in moving forward. And then Jimmy's little speech never has anything to do with her. Every day you've done exactly what I would want in a wife because you are replaceable. That's how men think. Who else did this? Clay. Clay, you're getting your own video soon. I will never forgive you. I love you to death. I want a relationship with you. This is what he's saying right now. And I want us to work so bad. But I don't want to marry you. <laughs> Look at her face. She knew this is her intuition going, 
Dang it, I knew this was coming. She didn't want to believe it, but she knew. That puke voice was like, I told you so. So then Jimmy brings in, oh, look at you, you're white. <laughs> yes, I'm still doing, okay. So now Jimmy has all this evidence to back up his case. That she's the one who really doesn't believe in it, not him. It's not him. You said that that other couple was so the strongest couple. Gee, I wonder why. I wonder why. Could it be they're the only people who actually like each other? Sorry, spoiler alert, but I assume you're already okay with that if you're watching this. So she's like, okay, let me just get clear. You're set on not getting married, is that right? I'm set on not going. Bye bye Birch. That's what he's saying. So then, like... In all fairness, she's like, why did you propose to me? Because I feel like you weren't even trying to get married. Oh, no, he wanted to get married, just not to you. And to save face so he doesn't like look like a douchebag on television who did choose, who ditched you because of your looks, because he chose you for your looks. You were easy to talk to. You didn't have a child. And you said you looked like her. So yeah, he's pissed. He's pissed at you. He's done nothing but basically punish her for deceiving him this whole time. But he knows he can't, he'll look like a bad guy if he doesn't stay with her because she's not this. So he's been doing double talk, double talk the whole time. And he's like, of course, he's like, Ugh. you didn't think I, I was trying to get married? How dare you? Like, I, I swear every single thing that she accuses him of that's true, he was like, Ugh. Their last argument, she said, all I need to know is that you're just not going to walk away from me. Why would she say that? Because this man who claims that he will always fight for the woman he loves literally has tried to walk out on her multiple times. Literally walked out on her once, slept somewhere else, but, you know, during that fight said, it's not going to work, I'm leaving. And then she had to beg him to stay. And he was like, but you're overstepping my boundary. The guy who said that, accused her of not telling him that he, that she wanted him to spend less time with the women, or at least one, at least one woman he has forked. He talks to every day. You didn't tell me you wanted me to step back. Okay, well, will you step back? I'm not willing to do that. <laughs> and here's the thing. She let out his dirty little secret because he said this off camera for a reason. Jimmy doesn't, just like the narcissist, I'm not calling him, I'm not diagnosing him. Just like the narcissist will say things behind closed doors and then to the public will be a whole different person. He told her this when the cameras were off. He just planted this bomb in their relationship like, oh, by the way, the women that I introduced you to who made that, co that whole conversation very inappropriate and uncomfortable. Yeah, I forked one of them, but you can't tell anybody. Why did he tell her? So she would trust him. No, you told her to make her insecure about that woman. You know, this one who's like a, he's like a brother to her. Well, they are in the South. And Inchmast is actually big in the South. I know that, like, it's a stereotype, but it actually is a legitimate stereotype. The girls that were like, how do you feel about Jimmy having close friends? Well, I I gave, I went into this whole scene for, like, 15 minutes because these girls, uh, this was a power move. They, like, they literally were so aggressive in this conversation. But with a smile. Just Southern... Southern white woman smile. So how do you feel about Jimmy having close friends that text him and talk to him all day, every day, and that he also used to sleep with? You okay with that? When she made the mistake of telling them that he accused her of being clingy, they're like, what? That doesn't sound like Jimmy. He's usually the one who's clingy. Hmm. He's the guy who can't breathe without someone pushing air into his lungs. This literally, if I had heard someone describe the man I was... <laughs> Um, engaged to, like, he can't do anything. He can't breathe without a woman. It says somebody, but we know it's a woman. Pushing air into his life. King baby. She was so surprised that Jimmy would call any woman clingy. Interesting. Because his sister knows him so well. So, maybe it's you. Because the Jimmy I know is very dependent on whoever he's with. <laughs> You know, the woman they talked about him crying during Schmegs with and they kept, they needed answers. Inappropriate question. Pretty sure that Chelsea did not know they had slept together when this conversation happened. Or she probably would have been, she probably wouldn't have told them everything like they wanted her to. And if anybody knows that Jimmy never turns down Schmegs, it's her. Maybe it is you, Chelsea. So I'm sorry, if I was Chelsea 
And this man made, was negged me all the time and talked to other women that he'd forked all the time, introduced me to these women and let them do this to me, disrespected me in front of other people, and then wouldn't even kiss me, much less have schmegs with me. I don't know. Maybe I would feel insecure too and become clangy. But you know, every time Chelsea has a valid complaint, he's just so mad because she's so emotional. Jimmy, this Jimmy is a clown. He was his her original sin was telling him that she was Megan Fox, and he never let her forget it. This whole season with her was to punish her for that original lie. That's the First thing he said, she lied to me, but he didn't want to look bad. So you know, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. It clearly matters. I mean, I'm very attracted to her. I can work with that, I guess. Clay also said in today's episode, I can work with that. I don't know if it means something different when Clay says it, but I don't ever want that in my wedding vows from the man I'm about to marry. Oh God, Clay. I'm so mad about Clay, but another video maybe she was insecure because the very first time they meet in person he's like i almost went home this morning i'm not even sure i believe that you probably lying he's planting the seed of doubt in her head i mean it was nothing against you me leaving the show so that i'm never gonna be with you has nothing to do with you the point was to find a wife i found one i almost left this morning which means you would not be my wife, but it's not about you. Don't take it personally. <laughs> oh, are you okay? Hmm, yeah, I didn't really want to hear that. What? I'm sorry. I feel like I can tell you anything. This right here. See, he's been doing this since day one. I was just trying to tell you the truth. I can tell you anything. I thought I could trust you. I mean, you can tell me anything, but I just didn't want to hear that you're about to go home. And that's a... She's allowed to be like upset by what he told her so besides her out of the gate first meeting being like no you're, you're gorgeous i mean it wouldn't matter anyway and giving us this told me everything that was going to happen this and this he called his fiance the wrong name and her gut was trying to tell her all along i feel like i'm gonna puke that's your nervous system babe but look chelsea told us she's used to being mean men who do nothing but be mean to her but the problem with Jimmy is he's unbelievably mean. But he pretends to be a nice guy who loves her for the camera. But he hates her. So this is actually more of a mind fork than if he was literally mean to her. Jimmy is using the tools of a southern white woman who will hate your guts and be like, Oh, bless your heart. Huh? And you can't smack her because you shouldn't do that anyway. But you can't even be mean to her because you're like, but she's being so nice. Her, his, his, her life with this man would have sucked. When he says he wanted to travel, all of the traveling was about like baseball stadiums or something stupid. This man was constantly making her feel insecure about he didn't like her being in his space. He didn't kiss her. He wants her to tell her, him how much she loves him all the time. How handsome he is. Wants her to, wants a woman to touch him all the time. But the problem Chelsea is he wants someone else. He doesn't want you touching him. He doesn't want you telling him he, you love him because you are nothing but a burden to this man. And for those of us who have a burden story from childhood, getting involved with a man like this will destroy you. It's so hard to unlearn that burden story when a man like this does nothing but reinforce it. And I think she knew that. That's why she always wanted to throw up whenever there was she was about to meet him, when he said, I love you. All those things made her literally viscerally want to barf because it was probably fore foreshadowing this the man who humiliates her and then she has to pretend like she's okay with it and instead of just being a cool girl and being that she ropes in ad and i covered that in the last video of how unbelievably racist this was along with the bean flick whatever that was bean dip covered it in the, another video about jarma but this is why she has every reason to be mad in this scene right before he laid all this out there being like yeah i don't want to marry you. He's like, we were just picking out songs to walk down the aisle at the, at, like, or, sorry, at the reception. They were picking out music. Why did you treat me like you did today? We had the best day today. Riding roller coasters, having fun, picking out music for the reception. Why didn't you tell me then? Why did you waste my time here? And this is exactly what AD said today. These men will not only make you crazy, 
and diminish any self-esteem and self-love you have left. They waste your time. So what does Jimmy do? He pulls out, you told me two weeks ago you didn't think I loved you. Yeah, because of literally all the things you were doing that showed you didn't give a crap about this woman. So I took a step back and said, I'm willing to try because I love you that much. Do you see how much I love you? <laughs> and then he goes to this whole speech about how, you know, he joined the dating show and he put himself out there. Yeah, you put yourself out there. You expose yourself as trash. And if I put myself out there, I knew I'd find my person. You did. It was Jessica, but she had a kid. Actually, you don't really. <laughs> That's the greatest thing I've ever done. Single-handedly. Jimmy, you need to do more. Going on the dating show, gaslighting the woman that you uh, proposed to, treating her like crap. Wanting to cheat with this Jessica, like, what? this is the best thing you've ever done single-handedly was expose yourself for the piece of that you are on national television. Uh, I would say this is the worst thing you've ever done single-handedly. And then look at this. And before that day, I keep changing accents, but I'm, I'm going to use the accent of his parents. And before that day, man, I am so set. The last video I made about this, I talked about this southern accent that he has. And it's very aristocratic or like rich sounding frat boy. Let me tell you, I just want to clear this up. Lots of Southern folks, Southern white folks. I will speak for the white folks because that's what I know. I know them very well. I know us. A lot of us who come from farming communities or working class or poor talk like this. Most of my relatives talk like that. And then I have some relatives who learned how to talk differently. For a reason. He does not sound like his parents. A lot of my family members do not sound like their parents. I do not sound like my parents. I literally don't have, I don't think, let me know if I'm wrong. I don't have a Southern accent anymore. It just comes out occasionally. I had one when I was born. Guess what? I learned that people think you're stupid when you have a Southern accent. So I unlearned my Southern accent on purpose. So I'm just saying, there's classism involved in the accents, and his parents definitely do not come from a lot of money, as far as I'm concerned, unless it's like from farming or something, or they don't come from like the like respectable kind of money. This is whole. This is so complex. I'm getting way off the top. But Jimmy sounds like a very typical Southern frat boy. Anyway, what he's doing here is trying to set it up as if this argument where she accused him of not loving her is the reason why he gets a free pass to get out and not look like the bad guy. Even though he literally showed that he had, did not care about this woman at all. Regularly. And then, if you don't know what I'm talking about, watch the long video. But he gets to use this one argument to be like, it's not my fault, bruh. This is on you. And she was like, wait a second. Before that, you lied. <laughs> you lied to me. Before you called me clingy. Before you did all that crap. See, now she looks crazy because he's calm, cool, collective, cool as a cucumber. Just like Gabby's boyfriend with those cops. This man is in front of cameras. He is very calm, right? And she looks like a crazy woman. And she's really just defending herself because what he's saying is bonkers. Because, yeah, again, Chelsea needs a lot of healing. Chelsea is not innocent. We know that. But he did put her through the ringer this whole season. I walk on eggshells with you. I can't tell you things that hurt my feelings because you get so upset. And when he gets upset, he makes her look crazy. That's what he's been doing all season. Like what? Look at her face. This is the are you forking kidding me face that every woman who has dated a man like that knows. Like, how do I even start? So then she's like, uh. And the thing is, Chelsea, if you were more healed, you would see that this man is doing you a favor. Rejection is protection. Same with AD. These women lucked out. This, this, they, this was literally some angel or somebody looking over them 
This, these men rejected them. The problem is they did it on national television. And she knows, and like she's, I mean, look what people say about her. She's getting dragged. Even some of the most feminist content creators that I've seen are like, don't see the, ma- the don't see the problem with Jimmy. And they're like, Chelsea, 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 pick me, pick me, pick me, pick me, pick me, Chelsea. Yes, she's a pick me. But that man is making her look so much worse because he's a liar, a gaslighting liar, entitled king baby. Like she can't even comprehend that she is literally, her whole, she's not even going to get to wear the dress. And this is again why we need to stop being so obsessed with that moment. That moment. And also the added pressure of it being televised in front of all of us fools talking about it on the internet. Yeah, I would never sign up for this show because these producers and these editors know exactly what material they're working with. So they go back and forth in nonsense. It's not just that one thing, it's like six things. Oh, I thought it was that one thing, Jim. But like it really hit home and hurt my feelings that you don't feel loved. <laughs> I can't believe me not wanting to have schmecks with you, not kissing you, and all these other things would make you feel unloved. It really hurts my feelings. And this right here, I told you I had a confidence about my friend. That. And then you threw it in my fucking face. You disrespected her. You disrespected me. She's like, but it made me uncomfortable because you guys text and call all the time. And you slept with her. And I love this. I get that you told me in confidence to protect your reputation. That's exactly what he did. But it made me feel a certain type of way. So that's unfair. And it was. And then he's like, what about your ex-boyfriend? But I don't call him and I don't hang out with him. Yeah, but you like FaceTimed him after we got a game because we have mutual friends. Anyway, we've, I've already gone over this. And I don't see him and I don't text him and I don't call him every day. Like the girls you made me meet. He's like, sure, continue to spur things out. She's like, I apologized for that. The way I brought it up. Because, you know, she did throw it in his face. But that's because he was like, um, I'm not going to step back from them. I don't care what you want. I'm not going to stop seeing that girl who hates you, who I used to fork. And she says, I'm really sorry I brought it up on camera when you asked me not to. Busted Jimmy. Jimmy's little image is tarnished. But it was my feeling that I needed to bring up. Look at this crap. T- Nobody believes this, right? It's not my reputation. I don't care about it. It's hers that I care about. All right. I mean, that's messed up for any future guy that she has anything with. Bro, that says everything about how Jimmy feels about women. If a man did not want to be with me because he heard that I used to be fork buddies with some guy, uh, fork you. Like, Jimmy, you don't believe any of this. This is all about you. You don't care about your friend. Why did you drag her on this show to meet Shit, this woman that you hate that you didn't want to marry. If you really cared about her, you wouldn't have put her face on television. This would have just been some anonymous person, but you brought her on this show. And then you told Chelsea, oh yeah, we used to do the brown chicken brown cow. And then, shocker, Chelsea's upset by that. But she can't tell anybody. And then when it comes out, I can't believe this. You did this to her. I care about her. I don't care about my reputation. No. All of this wasn't for my reputation this last several weeks. It's about that woman. I love it. She's like, I'm sorry you guys were in this love triangle. And he's like, see, you won't stop talking about that. That's exact. This is why I'm reluctant to, to marry you. I can't tell you anything. All I'm saying is that night was why I took a step back. And I couldn't ma- fathom marrying you after that. So then you did waste her time. You pretended like you were over that. And then you went to the fair and rolled roller coaster and picked out songs for the wedding. Why did you do all that? You wasted her time. So which is it? Are you just now deciding? Or did you decide then and then pretended for all this stuff? Hmm. Didn't y'all go like, yeah, they did all this stuff together. So this is where she finally figures out. You know what? I think I know what it is. I think it's an excuse. You were calling me clingy. You were being clingy. We're getting married. Like the fact that he's like, what are you being cling? Even though we're supposed to get married and I literally am not attracted to you and don't want to even kiss you because I hate you. Because he said all this, y'all remember? He's like, when did I say that? Jimmy, it's all on camera. She's like, the night we... Like this man, you like, I know that he thinks that stuff is like going to get edited out. Like we saw this whole conversation. <laughs> even though he just said it was that one night. He's like, no, that's not it. That's it. And then she does this. Man, this is marriage. This is marriage. Marriage is not easy. I want women to stop saying that. Marriage should not be 
this hard. Only bad marriages are this hard. You broke my trust. You broke my trust. He's like, I didn't tell your darkest secret. Your darkest secret is forking your friend. I love this. I, she is stepping into her power. Finally. Okay, keep throwing it in my face. Now I know I made the right decision. God. So just so you know, Chelsea has come out. I'm sure she's done a lot of interviews. This is all I've seen. But honestly, I can we please stop blaming her for their terrible relationship? Okay, she is taking accountability now. Like this already came out, Love is Blind's Chelsea has confronted her inner demons after looking insane in fights with Jimmy. I'm glad she's talking. I hope she goes on every podcast and tells the world what that man said behind when the cameras were not around. Because yeah, like I'd be upset if I were her because the show exploited all of her stuff with bad edits. Jimmy is a terrible human being who's getting off, off the hook pretty easily. And she's trying to laugh about the fact that she doesn't come off looking the best. I mean, honestly, this level of attention and criticism and fat shaming and all the things that has been thrown at Chelsea. I'm glad she's in therapy. I would be legitimately worried about her. Any woman online who's ever gone viral um, knows it's terrifying what people say, right? Like, I know that. And I know that she signed up for this show. And should have known what she was getting herself into. But I promise you, nobody knows when they go on these shows how they're going to edit it. And they they constantly make certain people look worse than others because that's what makes the show good. And so I do like it when the cast comes out and finally gets to talk and tell us what really happened? What these people are really like? Because we're never seeing the full story. And like she says here, there's a lot of context missing from both of those massive arguments, which is so unfortunate because I look like a literal insane person when it comes to exposing my life and having my relationships open to the world. Again, people are always like, well, they should know what they signed up for. They think they know what they're signing up for. But I promise you, as someone who is, you know, does this, like, I'm a woman online for a living who gets insane stuff said to me. A woman who's been, you know, attacked by all the red pill people and all that stuff, like, so much. Um, and I'm not even, like, doing this stuff. I can't imagine. I don't know how she's handling it with her mental health at that age with just being new to therapy. I, like, I have a support system that I've been building for decades now. So I can handle it a lot better. And I've had like a slow burn of exposure so that when I went super viral for the first time, it was terrifying. But I already was kind of prepped for it from all the hate I'd been getting in small. I've been micro dosing hate <laughs> uh, from the internet strangers for a while. So I could handle it. But these people, I promise you, they are not ready for it. And I understand why a lot of them become so close after the shows because nobody knows what it's like to go through this other than people who've been through this. But she says, there was so much context that led me to those points that were missing. So it sucks to see those parts not shown. But it is what it is. One of those fights happened after Jimmy went out with his female friends, one of whom he pretty like, we already know that. And she says in this interview, again, that off camera, he had told her and they agreed not to talk about it in front of the cameras. And that's why he was so pissed. He was like, you weren't supposed to say that. You were supposed to know that information so you are in, in your insecurities and looking like a crazy woman, but you're not supposed to tell all them. Right? And she did. I'm glad she said that secret. He should have never told her. Unless he was willing to let her say it in front of everybody. Because that fact, knowing that she had lost friends before who had slept with her boyfriend. Or like who, a boyfriend who had slept with some of his friends. We know she has a backstory around that. He told her that on purpose to make her look nuts. And then when she was like, look what he told me. This is why I'm kind of nuts. Oh, look at you, sweet baby. He was pissed that she didn't keep his secret. Men have so many secrets that they want us to keep. And we usually don't benefit from those when it's about um, exploiting us. So she talks about how she uh, started therapy finally. She's been talking about her mental health journey. And she even says this, and this is good. I thought I loved myself before, but I have never felt this kind of love. So, you know, again, I think a lot of women go on the show. A lot of people go on the show, but especially a lot of women who think they're at a good place. Um, and not only are they not ready to get married, they're not ready to have their lives blown open and criticized. And then she's like, I'd never seen a therapist before. 
Wow. I mean, that explains it all. She'd never seen a therapist before. And, but I'm not saying therapists cure everything. But if you haven't ever seen a therapist at the age of 31, there's a chance that maybe you haven't been working on yourself in any capacity other than, you know, the normal things, right? But haven't really done that hard, deep dive. I know that not everyone can afford therapy and therapy is not the solution to everything. She said that uh, she's taken on meditation. I've done so much from mental health. I feel like I'm at the best spot I've been in my life. And it's a really good feeling. Good for you, Chelsea. Look, I am, I'm never going to defend Chelsea for being, not, for, you know, still having the cool girl pick me stuff, for being insecure, for la, 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 la. But most of the things that she was criticized for, well, I hope you can take those into context. Because a Jimmy figured out all of her weaknesses and did this the whole show and made her look nuts like so many men do. Think about Chelsea the next time a man says, why are you being so dramatic? Why are you, why are you so emotional? Why are you so angry? Calm down. If on Tinder or one of these dating apps, they say no drama, they're the drama. They're the drama. They're the drama. Block. Bye.